Winston is a reactive dog. He isn't an aggressive dog, he's a reactive dog in the sense that if he sees another dog on our walk, he's going to want to run over and play with them. Alright, Wynn, come on, let's get in the shot. Ah, my god, he's so big these days, man. What's going on, guys? Today's video is really going to be focusing on Winston's training and obedience. Now, the reason why I want to focus on this is because I feel like I haven't really shown you guys that. And I want to show you that it's not all sunshines and rainbows. You know, I show you videos of him doing really well, but sometimes he just doesn't listen. Uh, especially now that he's going through the teenage phase. He has a mind of his own sometimes. And I want to show you guys that because a lot of videos on the internet, you know, show you their dog being absolutely perfect, and that's not always the case. What I'm trying to say is, there is always room for improvement, even if the dog looks perfect. Win, come. As soon as Winston wakes up, I test him immediately by letting him go outside and going potty by himself. Now the test comes in when I say, Winston, come. If he doesn't come, I would then have to go get him, right? But you don't want to be chasing your dog. Your dog is faster than you. Your dog is more agile than you. And they're going to turn it into this game. You want to create good habits rather than bad habits. So the way I avoid this is that I attach a long line to him just in case if he decides to blow me off. That way I grab the long line and bring him inside. Obviously you saw that Winston came in without any fuss, which is great. But there were those times where he would just completely blow off my command. And I just, I needed to make sure that he knew Come means come. There's no other alternative. So that's why I attached the long line to him. So we're going to be playing the find it game right now. And it's a great game to mentally stimulate your dog. I don't know why we haven't been playing it, but it's such a good game. So let's begin. Winston, you ready? Crate. All right, let's go find a spot for this right now. He's really, really good at this game, so I want to make it really challenging for him. All right, guys, I hid it in this towel. It's going to be really hard for him to smell it out. Obviously, Jules found it, cheater, but let's see how he does. All right, let's get him out. Three. What's in heel? That's my man, and those are my toes. Ready? Get it! No fucking way. No way. No way. You know, they're cheaters. They have this incredible nose that helps them find everything easily. It's unfair. Good man. Good boy. <laughs> That's a good boy. And then we do a little tug. I lost the rope actually. So usually we play this with a rope, but I don't know where I put it. Yo, man, that was just, it was too easy for him. We gotta make it more difficult. Come on, Winston, you're too good. Winston, crate. Now you're probably wondering why I'm putting him inside the crate. Well, it's just because I'm building value for the crate. With all the other things that we're training him, like keeping him calm inside the crate, we're also teaching him that the crate could be a fun place to be in. This may be cheating, but I don't care because he's just too good at this game. Put it at the top of the fridge. Let's see if he could get it. Free. Good man. Ready? Get it! Oh, 
Aha, I think I got him. Bro! You found it! Buddy, you found it! Cheater! Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater! Alright, I'll get it for you. Go get it! Alright guys, so now we are getting ready for his walk. And as you guys know, Winston doesn't get any free meals. So what I'm doing is essentially just putting his food in these ice cube trays and then I'm going to throw it inside the freezer. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because raw food is really soft and it just becomes a big clump. This way it becomes a shape where I can actually feed Winston on the walk. Now Winston is a reactive dog. He isn't an aggressive dog, he's a reactive dog in the sense that if he sees another dog on our walk, he's going to want to run over and play with them. Now we don't want this at all. So what I use to help with this situation is again, his meals. If he doesn't run over to them or he pays attention to me, I'm gonna reward him with food and the slip lead. Now the slip lead is great. It creates even pressure around his neck. So if he does end up lunging, it's not gonna hurt his throat over here. It's gonna create an even pressure all around his neck. Um, and this again is just something that we're really really working on because I don't want Winston to just be jumping at every single thing he sees on the road. He needs to be paying attention to me. So what you guys are seeing here is Winston reacting to another dog that is down the road and it's really unfortunate because we didn't even get to begin our walk yet and he's already over threshold. So at the beginning of our walk, I really tried to get his focus on me. I really tried to manage him and you're going to see that throughout this clip. We are going towards the direction that that dog was in and you're going to see when we get there, Winston is kind of going to be all over the place, sniffing the place because that dog scent is there. To many people this may look like Winston is an aggressive dog but he is not he is reactive because he wants to play with that other dog but I'm not allowing him so how do I know this well we can take this clip as an example Winston is barking Winston is lunging and Winston is losing his mind but if you notice he is also whining and why do dogs whine because they want something and what does he want? He wants to go over towards that dog. He isn't growling, he isn't being aggressive. It's because he wants to play with this dog. Now, if that isn't enough proof for you, I did do an evaluation on Winston. We brought him over to a daycare. Now, before anyone says anything, the reason why we brought him to a daycare is because I am getting married in September and we need someone to look after Winston because all the people that we know are gonna be at our wedding. So we found this daycare, they're really good. They are not an ordinary daycare. They do training, they let them stay overnight, You know, they have outings, they properly socialize dogs in a way that they match their temperaments and so on. So this place is really good. And before we can actually leave him overnight, they said we had to do an evaluation on our dog. So we did that and they came back and said that he plays very well, he's very energetic, he listens well, there was no fights, he did nothing wrong at all. But this doesn't mean we don't have a problem on our hands. Clearly we do. He's lunging at other dogs and this is something that's unacceptable. We want him to be as neutral as possible. Now back to the clip. What you guys are seeing is me trying to get engagement from Winston and trying to get him below his threshold again. Remember, he's in this aroused state and he's kind of all over the place. What I will give credit to Winston and to me for what we've been doing is that he has recovered pretty well. Before we even left the driveway, I was able to kind of pull him back or get his attention again. Yes, he did lunge out again and bark, but you can see he has good recovery, which shows a lot of potential that Winston has. We just need to fine tune it now. And how am I going to do this? 
well, I need a model dog. And in order to find a model dog, we need to go to a trainer. So we actually have an evaluation for Winston next weekend. And he is going to put us, you know, in either classes or in private lessons, depending on how bad he is. I think we're going to go to uh, classes because Winston, like I said, recovers pretty well. But I mean, it's up to him. He is the trainer. I am not. And then after that, we can consistently work on it. Consistency is key. Right now, I'm just walking around our neighborhood and sometimes I see a dog. There isn't any consistent training with this. That's why there, I'm not gonna get really far with this and that's why we're gonna be going to a trainer. There is a lot going on in this clip. I am managing him, I am feeding him, I am training him, I am getting engagement from him. So I kinda wanna give a blanket statement of what is going on here and then you guys could enjoy the rest of the clip and you know kind of keep these things in mind first things first i do not want any tension on the leash so when Winston gets a little bit too far from me i stop in my tracks which stops him and then it creates a tightness around his neck right that's what the slip lead is for now i have taught winston to think when there is tension on the leash or when there's tightness around his neck that he needs to stop as well and kind of release that tension. I'm not gonna call him over. I want him to think this through himself because he's a teenager now. He has a mind of his own, so he should have the ability to think this through. You'll also notice that I'm kind of moving around sporadically. I'll start running, I'll stop, I'll move to the left, I'll move to the right. This is because I want engagement from him. And when I get engagement from him, when I get anything that I like from him, I reward it with his meal. Go. Oh man. <laughs> there are people who are watching this video who are going through the same teenage reactive bullshit that I'm going through and I'm calling you all out. You have two options. You can either accept that you have a reactive dog, let them pull you down the fucking street like they own you, bark at whatever they want and embarrass you, or you can do something about it. Get off your ass, hand feed your dog, there are no more free meals under your roof. Start inside so you can lay down a good foundation and then gradually make your way outside. Make sure you're meeting their exercise requirements both physically and mentally every single day. Don't let them get away with shit. Hold them accountable. There are no more excuses for bad behavior to continue. There are many trainers and videos out there on the internet that can help you out. Dogs don't know how to act in our society, so we have to teach them how to behave. And if you're already doing all these things, don't give up. It will get better and all the blood, sweat, and tears that you've shed will be worth it in the end.